So here we have the new Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. A two-in-one hybrid device with Intel's new Core Ultra CPUs, a beautiful 120Hz AMOLED panel with touchscreen and pen support, all in a premium 16-inch laptop chassis. Could this be the ultimate creativity laptop for 2024? Hi, this is David at Mash IT, and tonight we're going to be doing the full review of the new Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. Now the build quality and the features of this stunning 2-in-1 is really impressive. From the premium aluminium body with solid construction, to the well-designed hinge that flips 360 degrees, allowing you to use the device as a laptop, a tablet with a touchscreen, you can watch movies in temp mode, or sit on the desk and draw on it with the included Samsung pen. This makes it an incredibly versatile device. The Galaxy Book 4 lineup this year is a little confusing. We've got the 16 inch Pro 360 that I've got here, a 15.6 inch non-pro version, and they've also got a 14 inch and a 16 inch Pro clamshell model. Now this 16 inch is a very expensive device, coming in at £1,799 in the UK, with the new Core Ultra 7 155H CPU with the Arc graphics, 16 gigabytes of RAM, only 512 gigabytes of SSD, but you do get that amazing AMOLED high DPI touchscreen, which is pen enabled, and Samsung do include a pen in the box. And despite being a six inch laptop, is incredibly slim and light at only 1.66 kilograms, yet we still get a good range of ports. Now we've got HDMI 2.1, and two times Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a status light on the left, and a micro SD card, a USB A, and a headset on the right but I would have preferred that they put a full-size SD card slot as this is a large 16-inch laptop. Opening the laptop is very easy due to the large cutout and the screen flips back 360 degrees with a very firm hinge. Now this gives us a number of ways to use it, obviously like a standard laptop. You spin it right over and you use it like a tablet. This is an incredibly large laptop to use in a tablet mode. You can also use it in temp mode, which is great for watching movies but I also like to use it in this mode where I've got it docked at my desk directly under my monitor. We can also flip it over and put it on your desk and use the included S Pen to draw. And I want to take this moment to talk about the pen experience, which has been very positive so far. Now, although the pen is quite slim, you do get a button on there and it's very comfortable to hold and it has got pressure sensitivity. Now, I'm no digital artist, but I've certainly enjoyed my time using it for notes and sketching. Looking at the other input devices, we're treated to a very large glass trackpad that scrolls incredibly well and the click feels solid, making it a nice premium experience. The keyboard has a number pad and the keys have very little travel, but typing is pretty comfortable. They're also backlit with two stages of brightness and an auto brightness setting. At the top right, we also have the power button, which doubles as a fingerprint reader, which works flawlessly logging it into Windows incredibly quickly. Obviously the palm rest is aluminium, and although very solid, you do get quite a sharp front edge. But if you're resting your wrists on the laptop, you're gonna feel that on the bottom of your wrists. Uh, it's not the most comfortable. I wish I had a sort of taper that off more, but there we go. There's also no speaker grills on the top, but you do get two large speaker grills underneath and the speakers sound like this. Audio test of the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360 at 50% volume. and 80%. And then let's whack it up to 100. So for such a slim and light laptop, they do get incredibly loud. They sound pretty good as well. But again, like with most Windows laptops, they could do with a bit more bass, a little bit more treble. And moving up to the screen, we have this beautiful 120 Hertz, high DPI AMOLED display. Now this bright and vivid panel has HDR and it's incredibly smooth, making it one of my favorite displays on a laptop. 
Now the panel being OLED does look like it's got PWM flickering, but it seems to be quite a high frequency as I'm able to use this screen without getting a migraine, which I do with a lot of the slower OLED panels. They've also implemented an effective anti-glare coating on this model this year, which is really handy because it is obviously a glossy screen and it does minimize some of that glare and reflections coming off this panel. Now above the screen, we have a webcam, which looks and sounds like this. This is a test of the webcam and the microphones on the new Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. As in the standard Book 4, we do have other features in the webcam, such as the automatic framing, which can be quite handy. We have the eye contact and we have the different background effects. So we've got the standard blur and my favourite, the portrait blur, which gives you just a nice subtle blur in the background so you can see there's something going on, but you can't see what it is. The auto framing is quite good as well, it's quite handy. Just take a little while to update, but it keeps you nicely in the centre of the frame. Unfortunately, there is no Windows Hello facial recognition built into this laptop, but because the fingerprint reader is so incredibly efficient way of logging in, this hasn't been a problem for me at all. Okay, so onto the performance, and the Book 4 Pro models use the new Core Ultra CPUs with Arc graphics. These CPUs have 16 cores, six of which are performance cores, eight are efficiency cores, and we've got two new low-powered efficiency cores. This leads to some great performance, especially for the wattage they use. Now sadly, the Book 4 360 Pro model has only 25 watts of sustained load. Now that's 5 watts less than the standard Book 4 Pro that we've just reviewed. Now this means, although the short boost is very similar, as shown in the Geekbench 6th benchmarks, when we run a 10 minute Citibench R23 benchmark, we can see much lower scores than the standard laptop version. Now this also translates over to the 3D performance. The Book 4 360 seems to settle at about 25 watt long-term boost, and that's in games and 3D benchmarks. And they are a fair bit slower than the Book 4 Pro, especially the CPU portions of the benchmarks. Most eSports and lighter games, 3D design and Photoshop all run really well. And with a lower wattage, we get great keyboard and palm rest temperatures. My guess is they lowered the wattage to keep it more comfortable when using it in the different modes, such as as a tablet. But in my opinion, they should have just let us choose the performance, as the current performance plans make almost no difference whether you're in performance mode, balanced or silent. Now the reduced wattage also leads to a very quiet experience, where the fans max out at about 38 decibels under load. This is much quieter than the standard Book 4 Pro, and is definitely a more pleasant sound for the user. It's almost inaudible in light use. Moving over to the battery life, and this is something that's been pretty impressive as we've got an OLED high refresh panel in here. Now we did turn the OLED panel down to 60 hertz for the battery testing, and we ran our usual battery tests of streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness. Now this gave us a pretty good result of just over eight hours of battery life. But I have to be honest, considering this is a new CPU with some extra low power efficiency cores, I was hoping we would get better this year but still Intel need to work harder on the battery life on their devices. But performance on battery was excellent as usually the case with Intel, and our Geekbench scores on battery is very similar to the mains performance tests. And this is something I always do appreciate because when you're using this laptop on battery, you don't feel like it's throttled back. Add to the fact that this laptop uses a USB-C port for charging the laptop, which means not only do we have an incredibly compact charger that easily slips into your bag, you can also use any other USB-C charger at 65 watts and above. Plus I can plug it straight into my 4K display which has USB-C pass-through of 90 watts, meaning that I can fully run this laptop as a one cable solution with my keyboard and mouse plugged straight into my screen, making it very easy to sit at my desk, plug one cable in and I'm up and running. Plus you could also use a power bank or a Thunderbolt dock to charge this laptop. So then who is this laptop for? Now there are cheaper devices on the market or there are more powerful devices on the market for the same price as this. But if you're looking for a light and very slim and compact 16 inch laptop that's incredibly versatile, this could well be the laptop for you. The fact that you can easily flip this around and use it as a tablet for drawing or just media consumption, run it in temp mode for watching a movie, use it as a standard laptop, it's just a great all round package. The fact that they've added in the S Pen so that you can actually draw on this device as well makes it a perfect device for a creator. And this CPU has got enough power for certainly a lot of the creative apps such as Blender, Photoshop, light video editing, light 3D design, it's perfect for this laptop to take on the go. Now the one thing I would say is it is an incredibly premium and expensive device. So, you know, you need to ask yourself, can you justify spending 1800 pound on a laptop like this? Well, that's my thoughts on the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360. 
As always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Could you make use of a 360 version on a 16 inch laptop? Or do you think it's just too big to be a fully flipped laptop? Put your comments down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.